Finally, she starts easily. Hey, tubers! Welcome back for another adventure. For those of you who follow my channel, you've looked at this thing more than once. It is a 2014 Lanai UTV 28, Lanai Bighorn 400 UTV, whatever anyone wants to call it. There are newer models out there, obviously, but I want to specifically talk about this one. This is one of the early ones. This thing stopped running, was taken apart, and in a storage situation, the bed, the seats, the nose, and several other pieces were lost. I guess this went elsewhere to be fixed once it was taken apart. Too much time passed, and all the other pieces were lost. You can see it's a relatively relatively young machine less than 700 miles less than 700 hours only 650 hours this thing probably originally died of a broken wire that goes to the pulse generator that triggers the CDI these are the wires to it I ended up discovering it was uh, broken right up against the pulse generator so I I just resoldered the wire um, generally speaking this thing has its its major problems are all electrical after getting the spark back by finding that the starter um, was having trouble kind of cranking the engine and I realized that the starter needed more power than the rated amp hour battery. With that, I relocated the battery back here, um, more or less doubled the size of it. I also relocated the wiring so the battery didn't have, you didn't have to take power from all the way up front, run it through all these wires, um, and the starting solenoid was up front, so I'm running it through all the wires back here. I figured I'd shorten everything up, as you guys could see I did. This is a Ford starting solenoid, so I moved everything back here. So, when you push the start button, this engages and your starter is going to go around. Unfortunately, at this point, there is no interlock for forward and reverse. I need to figure that out a little bit. If you push the starter button and you're in gear and the engine fires, it's going to take off. Once I relocated the battery and went with the bigger battery in the back, right? So I got rid of all this thing. Now I'm running power up here from the back of the UTV. I realized that when you go to start it, the CDI box is a little a little shaky. If it doesn't get its full 12 volts, it could be intermittent. Sometimes it'll fire and sometimes it doesn't. A little bit weather related, the wetter it is outside, the less chance of it firing. That CDI box is now about 10 years old, so it too probably needs replacement. The other problem, after driving it back up here and running it around quite a bit, it overheated and I realized the cooling fans were not firing up. So, more troubles. At this point, I ended up hot wiring one of the cooling fans so that when you turn on the ignition, it starts right up. And you can see the voltage is 12.1. If you now engage the starter, you can see the voltage goes down quite a bit. So I put this interrupt in here. So when you, so when you engage the starter, there's a better possibility of it starting. I also included this second um, switch. And I don't know if you can hear it. It fires up a second cooling fan. 
you can definitely see uh, the voltage drop down. Here's what I came up with. Turn the ignition on, you hear one fan running, but you push that button in, it interrupts the fan. See with the fan running, see with the fan off. Turns out each fan takes a little bit over three amps to run. Both fans together, and when you hit the starting solenoid, you're pulling almost 10 amps off of there. Anyway, I just hit the starter button. Now the fan's running. It'll keep things cool. My dashboard is fully functional. Sure it's on. See the battery is charging. That's the second fan is turned on. Still have plenty of power. A lot of times you don't need both fans, so why run them both? And that's no fans. One fan, both fans. So let me show you what I did put this all together. If I pop the dashboard off very quickly, you'll see this is the 12 volt that comes right from the key switch. Basically the key switch is just a master on and off. You turn it on, it turns on the ignition, and it powers up the other things. This is an interrupt. When I push this button, it stops the hot wired fan from running. This switch turns on the second fan if needed. This engages the starter. Once again, the starter is also hot wired. You push that button, if the key switch is on, the starter is going to turn. I put a voltmeter in to allow me to keep track of everything. This dashboard makes it so that this is still alive, right? I can see when it's in neutral, that'll be green, that'll go yellow when I pop it into reverse, right? I'm able to see how fast I'm going, the gas gauge, RPMs, and all that other stuff. I could have just put in my little portable CDI situation, you know, hacked it so that, um, the CDI is running on a pit by model. That does work for this, by the way, no problem. But that kills all the dashboard function and I didn't want to do that. I want the dashboard functioning. It appears as if the switches are alive. You can put it in reverse and if there were lights on it, you can turn all that other stuff on and off. So how about a quick ride? So now this thing is finally working like it should. Pop it into gear. Excuse that, I just turned off the choke. <laughs> this is kind of wet in the front here. Hopefully we don't make too much of a mess. a beast to push around. I'm in low by the way. Um, I mean it's a it's a real it's a real bear. I mean it it's more or less impossible. So having it so that it reliably starts and moves, you can see the speedometer works. I'm doing seven eight miles per hour. By the way, by me 
are getting like Noah's Ark worth of rain. I got a lot of flooding. You guys can see the ruts. I got a lot of mosquitoes. I mean, I have mosquitoes to the point where they're uh, beginning to steal cattle. They are absolutely horrible. If one goes outside and you don't spray yourself, you won't last three minutes. They are so horrible, you just you just kind of run away. You gotta go in the house or you gotta spray yourself. I really hate taking a deep bath every time I wanna leave, every time I wanna open the front door and go out, but it's something you really, really need to do. We're also, I live, I live in tick country here, and uh, those beasts are horrible also. If you leave the beaten trail at all, they are uh, just like all over you instantly. So I don't know what it's like where you guys are from, but if anybody needs any water, there's plenty of it in the Hudson Valley of New York. <coughs> anyway, I'm going to uh, I'm going to head back to the driveway. I'm going to do a quick conclusion. And uh, for anybody who buys one of these things just so that you kind of know what you're getting into. This doesn't have all the supports it needs, so I don't know if I'm going to come up with, you know, something across like that so this thing settles on. Maybe use those to bolt it down, right, and keep it on there. Um, I have some kind of grill work I'm probably going to come up with. I get to mess around with the angle to see what everything looks like. You know, once I kind of get a rough idea, I'll go with the cardboard template, get that on there and figure out what I'm going to do. I just want to put some kind of windshield on in this thing. It's going to live outside, and I just as soon keep the dashboard and interior a little drier. Seats, no problem. Got to cut out a couple wooden templates, foam, staple things down. That'll get me there. The back is going to be a little bit more complicated. The reason why is one could easily build, you know, a little bit of angle iron, some of this stuff, right? Make a nice flatbed, right? Dumping, all that. Very happy. Not a problem. The only thing is water's going to leak through. And I just as soon not drench my transmission there and then have it all freeze up in the winter. So I think it's going to be angle iron, um, this decking wood. And then I was up at uh, P&T Surplus. Oh, Pete and Tim up there. They have a 4 by 8 piece of quarter inch plastic. It's yellow. They're after 25 bucks. I think I might just get a sheet of that. And after I build the bed, just use that of the base of the bed. I don't think, I don't think I'm going to put any sides. Or if I do, there'll only be a, a low rail around the whole thing. That way this could also be used a little bit as a, as a table or I can put a generator right on top of it, you know, and move things around like that. I'm also thinking about a piece of black plexiglass. So now that this project kind of is running and moving, what would I say about the 2014 Lanai Bighorn 28, uh, Bighorn UTV 28? I would never buy this new. Yes, it costs half the price of um, a brand name UTV. But first of all, getting parts, not all that easy. So unless you're handy with hacking, that's going to be a big problem. 
Secondly, even if you um, if you're not a hacker and uh, you don't want to work on it, it's very hard to get any kind of dealer support for this rig. It's hard to get a manual for it. They seem to change things each year with these. Uh, about changing the oil. This thing has an oil plug right on the bottom of the motor and you figure you would reach right up through the hole in the um, bottom out plate there and you could do that. The only problem is the plug won't come out and the casting is really really thin so you end up having to use a um, one of those siphon one of those oil siphon devices to get the oil out of the engine. I mean, should you get underneath there and go all oh, Incredible Hulk, you might just crack the case and you've just turned your $10,000 UTV into a $500 UTV. I paid $400 for this, and I think for $400, bucks, especially when it's done, I'll be okay. What kind of money did I put into it? I put a lot more time than money. But, you know, key switch, a couple of starting solenoids, this stuff here, a battery, a Ford starting solenoid after I burned out the two OEM ones, right? Some wiring. I don't know. I probably have about 550 invested in this thing. I don't see any other big money that went to anything. So from an out-of-pocket point of view, it wasn't a lot of pain and suffering. From a learning point of view, God, I learned about a lot about these things. And once again, because of that, I really would not recommend it. Save your money, buy a good used Honda side-by-side -side for 10000 or Yamaha, Kawasaki, you know, one of the big brand names where you could get some support. Most shops, once again, if you show up with this thing on your trailer, you're going to go home the same thing, same day with this thing on your trailer. The only problem is it's not going to be fixed because they won't let you unload it. I want to thank you all for dropping by and watching and commenting, subscribing. I, uh, the comments are really helpful if anybody's put a bet on one of these lately. If you could share some of your thoughts, materials, whatever you used. Uh, if anybody's hacked up plastic other than using templates for the front of it, let me know. If anybody has a 2014 one of these and they want to tell me it's the most amazing UTV in the world... Um, maybe if you keep it inside and treat it like a collectible car, it will treat you better than this one looks like it treated the world. Anyway, once again, feet down, heads up, get out and enjoy each and every day. Bye now.